And it is that time for Roundtable Live here at Revolution Radio Freedom Slips.com. Be rolling on until 4 a.m. in the morning Eastern Time. New ideas, different hosts every night, different subjects every night. You never know what's going to happen right here at the Roundtable Live. King Arthur has nothing on us. We're going around and around. Hello, everyone. This is Noreen Helpan, and welcome to Wild at Heart Roundtable. And I am broadcasting to you live from the Western Continental USA. I'm in California, and here it's 9 p.m. Monday night, where on the schedule for Freedom Slips, this roundtable, is listed as Tuesday, 12 midnight, if you're in Eastern Standard Time. Hello to everybody out there and the whole entire globe at different time zones. If you want to call in and join this roundtable, we have a call-in number for Studio A, and that would be 347-688-2902. And I'm going to check the chat room to see if I can be heard. I think I am. I usually do a sound check. Okay, I got the numbers here. I'll announce in a minute. With that, um, first, you guys, I, I know that Ferguson, Missouri, they did do the verdict tonight, and that was the officer that was um, in question of shooting the young man, um, the 18-year-old, to death um, during the altercation, and that was a big trial a few months back, and he was found not guilty. So basically, um, from what I've been following in Ferguson right now, um, there is a little bit of rioting. There's a cop car, police car on fire. Um, I think a Walgreens is on fire, and but it seems to me like in most cities here in LA, I was listening to lo- local radio, and there's not, there is a little protesting here in LA going on. Um, New York City has a huge pro- march. I don't think any violence or any vandalism has occurred in New York, so um, that's kind of the update that I'm hearing um, across the country, just from what I've been hearing in the last hour. And we, you guys can call in and talk about that if you want. Um, but I really want to start off here on a really positive note. We have a really special person here, and his name is Arnaud Garan. And I hope I didn't butcher your last name, Arnaud. Is that correct, your last name? Uh, Garan. I think you got Goran. it pretty good there. Okay. We have him here. And I want also, I don't know if Nick is still around. Nick, are you there? If, he's, if you're not Nick, don't worry. If you're there, you can say, you can give a shout out. But. Maybe he's off anyway. I'm here. It's oh. better plan to have you, but. <laughs> okay, thank you, Nick. Yeah, if you want to say hi, you can, or you can hang and lurk if you want. I just wanted to always say my appreciation to you because Nick is, like, one of the big supporters of the station. He does so much behind-the-scenes work, you guys. He's he's really cool. Right, Nick? <laughs> and Nick's like, no, I'm shy. I'm not empty. Anywhere, anytime I can help. Anywhere. Yeah, I you know. Anywhere. You're like, anytime I can help. But he really, he really is, like, you know, one of those really, like, nice, very um, nice souls. He's a good guy, and, and he really very sincere individual. Okay, you know what? If I take this, Bruce, I'm going to – I think I'm going to pull you in. So I'm going to decline Bruce and pull him in. I have another caller here. And I do want to introduce my guest, um, my very special guest, and that is Arno. And I just – I basically, I didn't butcher his name. So – Anyway, um, yeah, Arno is a really special person. He um, he had he's had a past uh, struggling as many of us do with illnesses, and um, as a result, you know, like like as a result of his issues, personal issues, he found like a really amazing path in his life, and um, he's helped quite a bit of people. And so, Arno, I want you to say to the listening audience a little bit about how because I'm amazed when I listen to how I was listening to your video and reading um some of the stuff from your website which I'm going to post in the chat room how you came about I know you started in your youth with having some very serious physical issues and that led you to kind of like explore a whole world which I think is amazing you explored a whole world of how emotions coincide um with physical um, you know, situations, issues, illnesses, and that really struck me about what I read about your past. And you want to maybe elaborate a little bit to the listener or audience about who you are and your past and how you found it? 
Sure. Yeah, I was really sick growing up. I had a lot of different health challenges that, you know, the doctors would tell you that there's nothing they can do. And that's what they told me for years. And it was not just bad nutrition. It was also emotional, as you said. You know, when we have emotional traumas in our life, it impacts our body. And I found myself after growing up in a very challenging childhood, just destroyed on all levels, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. And I needed to learn how to rebuild myself. And in learning how to heal myself, I wanted to help other people to rebuild themselves and heal themselves too, which is how I got on the path. Mm-hmm. So um, what was, can you elaborate a little bit about when you were young and I was reading that you, you know, you were going through so many issues that you thought you were actually going to die. And what was that moment that led you to like your aha, your, your epiphany, you know, how you found that like, you can actually do more for yourself than what you imagined. What was the aha that allowed me to realize that I wasn't going to die? Mm-hmm. You know, the, to be honest, I always knew that. Okay. When I when I was growing up, I always had just horrible, horrible allergies, and I was always sick, like I was always missing school. And then when I was 13, I missed the whole first month of seventh grade because I had asthma that wouldn't stop, and I went to the ER a bunch of times. And when I was 16, I was diagnosed with arthritis by a doctor in Seattle. When I was 18, I had just terrible pain in my, my stomach, which was later diagnosed as an ulcer. When I was 19, I went to the bathroom and blood came out, which was an everyday thing after that. And every time I went to a doctor, they would tell me essentially the same thing. Well, there's nothing we can do. You're already on the strongest medication. You're just going to have to learn to live with the pain. And every time that I would hear that, in my own mind, I would think to myself, there is something that can be done. You just don't know what it is. So I never believed anyone who told me that I couldn't get better. And I think that was really the main reason why I didn't die, was because I just never believed anyone who said that I couldn't get better. Yeah, you never believed that. And so that led you on a, at that time, um, I know you're pretty young, but you, you were embarking on maybe possibly becoming a naturopathic doctor or were there other things that you, I know you said you had a, um, the MBA or something or a business degree. So were you, which, when, when you knew what was going on with you, did you feel like, well, what's, the path for me to take and what was going on with that because it is interesting how people will say to like a business degree you know thinking okay no oh, I mean I do what my dad did or what I feel I can do and I like it and then all of a sudden they just get diverted in a different way so what was that like for you and because I know you went on it completely or maybe you incorporate some of the things you know you learn in school not that you have to but um how was it that I guess you went in this direction and it just just exploded for you what what were like the signs that said that you just have to do this in your life that's a great question well i wasn't sure what i should do when i was starting off in college so i just decided to get a degree in business because i figured that would be good no matter what i ended up doing and when i hit about like you know it's nearing the end of my college time i was really so sick that i decided i wanted to become a doctor so that I could figure out how to heal myself since no doctor I'd ever been to could figure it out. So I just thought, well, if I go to medical school, then maybe I can figure it out. And so I did all the pre-med courses. And after going to some naturopathic doctors, I felt like their school of medicine just held so much more useful information. They just seemed to know so much more than the Western medical doctors. So I did apply to Bastyr, which is a great naturopathic medical school. I did get accepted. But I was so sick at that point that I couldn't even go to school half time and I couldn't work. Like I was sleeping 12 hours a day and I was like barely functioning when I was awake. So I, I told them I, I just can't do it. I have to take a year off to get healthy, which was so ironic because I wanted to go to their school so I could learn how to get healthy. Meanwhile, I couldn't go because I was too sick to go all day. And I remember mm-hmm. uh, just I decided the only thing to do is just start praying. And I just prayed for help. And a friend of mine lost. 20 pounds in 30 days just by changing her diet and I just had to investigate that you know that really 
really surprised me that she could lose so much weight so quickly after being a vegan for 15 years and working out, you know, two hours a day, five days a week, and she couldn't lose that last 20 pounds, and all of a sudden it disappeared. I just wanted to know what she did. And if you don't mind telling people um, just generally, because weight is a big issue for everybody and it's so complex, what, what were some of the things that she did or what people generally, you know, that you feel people need to know that they can do, you know, because everything is so, there's so much information out there about weight. Oh, it's so true. And it's so yeah. confusing because you'll read 20 books and they'll, you might find 20 different answers that are all conflicting with each other. So how do you know what to do? Uh, the basic strategy for any health challenge, whether it's weight loss or, you know, if you have arthritis or if you uh, have an emotional challenge, whatever the challenge is, the strategy is always the same. Find out the real cause, the root cause. And then you have to look at the root cause could be physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual. And then you have to find out what tools will address that root cause. Those are the three steps you go through to have a a true healing of the human body. So in my friend Michelle's case, she exercised didn't work, eating vegan didn't work. And I went to her house and she was thin and I said, what did you do? And she said, well, I, I had been eating only raw food, which, of course, made no sense to me. I had no idea what she was talking about. What does that mean, raw food? You know. And she said, well, you know, why don't you come over, come over for dinner? So I go to her house, and she brings out this ugly green-looking thing that she called lasagna. It was like spinach leaves on top of shredded zucchini and pine nuts. And I was like, oh, my God, this looks <laughs> like it's going to be terrible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? And it actually was really, it was really good. And it made me full, which surprised me because I didn't think you could ever be full from just eating vegetables. And then she was buzzing some blender in the kitchen and she came out and she had this chocolate pie made of carob because back then there was no such thing as ground cacao powder. And it was really good too. And I was really surprised at this whole world I'd never heard of before. So in her case, you know, it was really just switching to a diet that was better and worked better for her but for someone else who's trying to lose weight a really really important tip to know is that um, in the study of thousands of people a hundred percent of americans are deficient in essential oil and your body needs essential oil to run your thyroid which is what controls your metabolism and your ability to burn calories and what what, what would be um an essential oil Across the board, or does it depend on the individual's body type? Are you talking about omega-3 fatty acids? Are you talking about olive oils or coconut oils? Or That's a great question. An essential oil is defined as an oil that you have to get from food. So you have, you can't, your body can't make it from other oils. It, it, it can only be, you know, gotten from food directly. And there's only two, omega-3, like you said, and omega-6. And most people have enough omega-6. So really it's just people are missing omega-3. So that's a huge problem for Americans for many, many reasons, not just for weight loss. Uh, olive oil isn't the best source of omega-3. The, the best sources of omega-3 are flax, that's F-L-A-X, flax oil, chia seeds, which are really awesome, uh, hemp seeds, and no, you can't get high, sorry, and then walnuts and um, pumpkin seeds are really high in omega-3. So those are the five best. And you can just go buy flax oil at your health food store, and you'll get tons of omega-3, but... And speaking in terms of weight loss, your thyroid actually runs on any good fat, not just omega-3. Like coconut oil works fine, actually works great, as long as it's not heated or treated in any way. It's ironic. uh, Today I went to um, the local health food store and I bought a raw, unrefined coconut oil. Um, And I have bought hemp. Hemp is a little bit higher price. It's it's really good, though. I think hemp um, has a calming effect on people, too, the, the oil. Would you, would you stand with that statement? It's kind oh, of totally. calming, yeah. Well, um, there's several reasons why it's calming. Mm-hmm. In Dr. Gabriel Cousins' book, Depression Free for Life, he says he's over 90% effective at curing depression, which is incredible, with nutrition. And that's just amazing in and of itself. And he outlines the four nutrients that you need for brain chemistry. And the number two nutrient is omega-3. So when people are kind of off with their brain chemistry, then they don't feel good, so they feel depressed. 
So you give them the omega-3, their brain chemistry turns on, they feel happy, and they're not depressed, they sleep better, and of course, like you say, they probably feel calmer. The other reason why it makes people calmer is that it balances blood sugar. If someone has a blood sugar crash, they get grouchy. So if you give them oil and keep their blood sugar even and they don't crash, they don't get grouchy. So they just seem more mellowed out. So yeah, it works on both those levels. Oh, I was muted. <laughs> Poor Bruce. I was just going to introduce you, Bruce. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, I wasn't trying to like ignore the guy. I'm going to ask him back. Um, yeah, there's your, you have a website and I'm going to post it in chat. Um, let me see if I can get back in a chat. Uh, you know, um, when you say the thyroid, would you say that a lot of toxins affect thyroid issues? I would think, or, or I mean, they affect all, all our issues in our body. But I mean, you were mentioning thyroid as one. Um, would you say some of these oils also help to flush out toxins? Is maybe more the, the question. Well, the human body uses fat good usable fat to protect itself from environmental toxins. If someone gets heavy metal and other toxicity into the body, the body will then store it into fat cells. So yes, the body does use fat to protect itself, but it doesn't necessarily get them out. It just allows the body to keep it away from your brain and your liver and other major organs. Right. Um, Would you say that when you were going through all those we were talking about health issues just now. When you were going through all those health issues in your youth and you found all these different ways to overcome all these things, um, were the essential oils like one of, the, one of the keys to kind of unlock your health to become better? I was definitely deficient in good fat in general. My naturopath that I went to, you know, gave me blood tests and said that my good oil or my good fat count was really low. And I had a severe dandruff and dry skin problem. Like, my skin was so dry that if I scratched my hand with my finger, like, skin would come off. Like, my hand, my, my skin was so dry. And when I started eating healthy, I just had this craving. It wasn't really a craving. It's more, it was more like my body was calling for avocados. And I, I differentiate the two because the craving is like something that you you consciously know it's not good for you, but you still want it and you can't get rid of that feeling that's really what I had I would call a craving this was more like my body was talking to me and it was really loud and it was saying eat avocados and so every day I made guacamole and ate it either with spinach or with celery and literally for lunch I have guacamole on celery and for 10 days I just ate so many avocados like six or eight a day and then all of a sudden I didn't like avocados anymore after 10 days but what was interesting was my dry skin problem went away and never came back and I know that I was just severely depleted of good usable fat, which most people are. I think I was just really depleted. So getting my fat levels up to, you know, a more normal level definitely helped me to get healthy. It's all part of it, you know. The human being needs to get toxins out and it also needs to put nutrients in. So those are the two things you have to do for your body. And the same thing is true for your emotional body. you got to put good emotions in and get the old emotions that are stuck inside of you out. The same thing is true mentally and spiritually. That's the rule of health and that's the rule of evolution is get all the toxins out and put all the nutrients in and your body can fix itself. I have to make a comment about what you said. Negative emotions, yeah, instinctively I think we know that emotions impact our health. And I think as we progress and evolve, Oh, yeah, Merritt, hi. I was just going to make a thing and I'll get you Merritt. I think she's got um, her sound on. That's okay. Um, I think that as we evolve, we learn, you know, we, we start to, we start to learn about our emotions and how that's integrated with the physiology or the physical side of, of sickness and health. And so, um, I think Merritt's got the, she's got the, um, yeah, so, or no, that's my statement I was going to make. Uh, yeah, Merritt, just, just maybe shut off the uh, station. Hey, Merritt, how are you? Yeah, I just turned it off. I realized that's okay. that it was Oh, that's all right. Helpful. Hey, yes, welcome, Merritt. And you have a, you were going to make a, a, ask a question, um, or make a statement. You Go for it. So I wanted to ask Arno, how do you deal with stress at work? Oh, that's a great question. So there's two questions here. Noreen wants to talk about emotions and how they impact the body. And this is a great question. 
Um, how do you deal with stress at work? Which, of course, everyone wants to know the answer to that question. And there's so many different things that you can do. One of the absolute best things that you can do to deal with stress at work is to take a break every two hours. Just every two hours, just take a 10-minute break. Go outside for a walk. Uh, if you know how to do causing peace, which is an exercise I teach that causes you to quiet your mind down, it's the biggest stress reliever of all, and it's used in business and in sports as one of the major secrets of success. And if you can't do a break every two hours, at least take a break you know, during lunch or at some time during the day for 20 minutes, even if, even if it's at the beginning and at the end of the day for 20 minutes, uh, to just get your mind quiet. And that will reduce your stress massively. So that's one really powerful way is just to take a break every two hours or and or do causing peace, you know, during your lunch break, before you work or after you work, before you have dinner. Another great way to reduce stress at work is to change what you eat. Um, it, toxic food actually causes stress to your body. So if you can upgrade your diet to more fruits and vegetables and less, you know, bad carbs and less sugar, less, you know, candy bars and more, you know, fruits and vegetables, you're actually going to be reducing your stress overall. Another great tip is to take 10 deep breaths three times a day. So if you take a 10-minute break every two hours, during that break, you can just go outside and take 10 deep breaths. And when you breathe, you breathe in through your nose and you breathe all the way down past your belly button because that actually physiologically causes your body to relax. And a lot of people get used to breathing into their chest, which causes stress. It's a physiological response. So with that in mind, you actually could practice consciously breathing throughout your day when you're at work and just breathing through your nose, in and out, all the way down to your belly, and watch how you naturally relax and that naturally reduces your stress. And I could continue on, but those are some of the the most important tips is to watch your breathing, take breaks, and to try to eat healthier and more into that direction. If you can go all the way and go all out on your diet, I mean, I've had clients who just take a jar of green smoothie to work, and that's their lunch, so they don't need to spend a whole hour going to a restaurant or doing anything for lunch. So their whole lunch break can be spent just practicing causing peace, and that is a huge stress reliever. Thanks, Arno. You're welcome. Yeah, so um, it sounds to me like the breathing uh, technique that you just described, it's similar a little bit to yoga, or um, am I not correct? It just seems like, but what I guess my point is that anything emotional base that creates illness in a person's body, you have to, I guess, it's not so much a thing about reading it literally, but probably like staving it off. So things like yoga, deep breathing, it, it kind of saves off maybe some of the, like Merritt was saying, the effects of the stress. And then after that, you have to also new, um, give your body proper nutrients in order to also save off, um, you know, all these stresses and toxins. So it seems to me like this is a twofold effect um, that plays into overall health in many levels. And maybe for some people it's more emotional, some it's more the food they eat. But I think in this day and age for many people it's really, um, it's really both. They're all impacting each other. Your emotional body impacts your physical body. Your physical body impacts your emotional body. The four parts of you, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, are all impacting each other, and they all impact each other equally. And a lot of times, we who are very scientific, like myself, it's easy for us to forget about the physical um, impact on the emotional, mental, and spiritual, and the emotional, mental, and spiritual impact on the physical. We can tend to get lost in just what we can measure and it's harder to measure energy, it's harder to measure thoughts, and it's harder to measure unconscious beliefs from a long time ago from your childhood that are still impacting you now. It's harder to measure, you know, anger and how that's causing your stress at work, even if it's anger about your mom or your girlfriend or your dad or your brother or whatever's going on in your life. And a lot of our emotions that we feel now aren't even from now. They're from a long time ago. And you're right, Noreen, when you say that it's all integrated and we can't just look at one part of the person we as a human have to realize we're all those parts and we need to work on all parts of ourselves to reach our maximum potential my goodness so um 
you know, nowadays too, we are so impacted with many stressors coming from all over. In your assessment, are now besides um, besides personal stress and and food uh, lack of nutrients and thereof. Would you say that what would you say is one of the preeminent factors for ill health? Would you say that many of these combined? I mean, because there's so many. Um, I guess it's depending on the person's biochemistry as to how they receive um, some of these, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it, transmitters of, you know, oh, this is healthy and this isn't. And what would you say, like, would you say, like, for example, or maybe I'll narrow it down to a very precise example. Would you say that the food that they have out there, because I was saying something earlier about GMOs, would you say that that a lot of our food is just not very nutritious, and this also exasperates ill health? Well, it's, it's a great question. Like, what's the real cause of the health challenges that people face, and what are the major causes in general? And America is different than most of the world. When America is also by far the most unhealthy country, the most overweight country. Even though we have a lot of money, we don't have good health in America. And in my first course, The Solution, I get into the three major reasons why America is so unhealthy. And you nailed the number one reason, well, one of the three reasons, which is our food quality is the worst food quality in the world. And, of course, we're the most unhealthy country in the world. Our food is full of toxicity. It's full of poison. It's full of modified DNA. And it's easy to understand why it's that way if we look at the history of our country, and that is one of the major reasons why Americans are so unhealthy as a nation, is our food quality is just really, really bad. A lot of people just switching to organic food, not even switching to better, you know, necessarily food itself, like they're not switching from meat to organic fruits and vegetables, they're just switching to organic food, period, see huge improvements in their health, just just reducing the amount of toxicity they're putting in. It's, it's really a very difficult balance in some ways because myself, I really try my best to get organic. It's not always easy. And we don't always know even the quality of the organics, but that's really another issue that maybe someday we'll have to discuss again. Um, we have here with us Ian Murphy, and I think he has a question. Welcome, Ian. Uh, thank you very much, Noreen. And uh, it's a pleasure to finally contact. I know, I know a friend of mine took your course, The Foundation. He said it was absolutely awesome and really recommends anyone... Uh, take that course, but it's, it's great to connect with you live. Well, thank you, Ian, and uh, thanks uh, for the recommendation. I appreciate it. Yeah, he really thinks anyone should really take that course. It really overcomes a lot of uh, challenges in their lives and sets them up for a really much better experience of living. But uh, uh, my question for you is, you know, a lot of us uh, work in uh, uh, office blocks where there's bad air conditioning or just air conditioning, and... Uh, so bugs sort of float around, you know, and, uh, and and people get sick quickly. It becomes like dominoes. You know, so one person gets it, and the next off, and the next off. And you know, so do you have any recommendations uh, uh, or total health mastery programs? Maybe you can share with us that we can either like listen to you or maybe even watch you online. And will you talk about how we can beef ourselves up for this winter season and avoid colds and flus and all this other stuff? Absolutely. Well, actually, in the foundation course, which is my second course, I cover a lot of different things that would benefit and answer this question for you. But let me give you some tips right now. Um, number one, if you make yourself healthy, if you build your immune system up strong enough, you can't get sick. Uh, one of my certified health consultants, we, we certify people in health consulting, uh, Jennifer Martinez, uh, she wanted me to come and speak to her office that she worked in. And there were 200 people there, and she said when one person would get sick, everyone would get sick. And she said, I'm just sick and tired of people sneezing and coughing on me all the time. Could you please come and teach a class on how to not get sick? And it's really not that tough if you have a very vital, healthy immune system. You can't get sick. No one can get you sick. Your girlfriend will be sick. Your boyfriend will be sick. Your spouse, they'll cough on you. They'll sneeze on you. You'll, you'll be in the same bed with them. You'll make out with them, and you won't get sick because your body's so healthy. And there's a great story about that that I'd love to share if there's more time. Um, but there's a couple other things you could do that are really simple. One thing you can do is you can get a diffuser and add an essential oil to it um, called, what's it called? It's made by doTERRA. 
Jeez, I have it upstairs too. <laughs> um, if you if you contact doTERRA, they'll tell you the one that gets rid of colds. Um, it's very similar to Thieves Oil made by Young Living Essential Oil. And Thieves Oil is called Thieves Oil because during the Black Plague, when half of Europe was killed, people could use Thieves Oil to then go and raid the bodies of dead people and not get the plague. Um, so this oil, if you put it in the diffuser and diffuse it in your office, will kill in the air viruses, bacteria, mold, and whatever, so no one gets sick. And I've you know, met school teachers and so on who put that in their classroom, and no one in their class gets sick. So it's called OnGuard. That's the name of the oil from doTERRA. It's D-O-T-E-R-R-A is the name of the company, doTERRA. They're the only company I know that guarantees that all their oils are edible. And if it's not edible, I don't know, I don't know that you should be breathing it in. So they're the only brand I really would personally use in my house. Um, so that's one thing. If you just plug in one of their diffusers with their on-guard oil, you can't get sick in your office because the bug's not going to spread around. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, thanks, Mary. It's called on-guard. And then the other thing you can do is you can actually put plants in your office building so that the plants will filter and clean the air. And there's a video on TED Talks called How to Grow Your Own Air, or maybe it's called How to Grow Your Own Oxygen. It's about 20 minutes long. And he tells you the three major plants to use that you can buy at Home Depot that you can put in your office that will actually create enough oxygen, if you have enough of these plants, to not need air from the outside. And they did this in India because the air outside was so polluted that they actually just decided to have their own indoor air. So if you have you know, plants filtering the air, you have on guard going through the air, no one's going to get sick. But of course, if you have an immune system that's unbeatable, then it doesn't matter where you go, you never get sick. Awesome. I, I just checked that. That on guard is on Amazon. I just had a look at that. And uh, I'll certainly be looking at uh, more plants in my office. Yeah, I looked it up, you know, and it, you need quite a bit of plants. And at the same time, I mean, how great would it be to have an, an office full of oxygen and how much would that impact your ability to think clearly and work well and maybe even reduce your stress? Back to that question. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thanks for the question, Ian. Yeah, that was really important, especially now that it's cold season. And people are being exposed to more masses of people, too, out in public. And, um, yeah, germs will abound, right? Definitely. And wouldn't it be great to know that you can't get sick at work? Because <laughs> you've yeah. got, got all those things working for you. I posted um, your website in the chat room. It's uh, TotalHealthMasteryUSA.com, and I posted that for the people in chat. Um, and there's a lot of great information on there. I think um, one of the things that impresses me is you seem to have a very it, – it's, it's, you know, health is so complex, but really when you get to the root of it, it is emotions and it is your environment and how it interplays with your own body. Uh, I think, too, um, do you feel that – part um if you were to divide or do you think that it's impossible to do could you could you divide the percentage of what you think how much the mind uh traumas and stresses um, affect health versus external things um physical things foods uh pollutants and so forth um would you say it's fifty fifty or depends on the individual or or really is it both? That's a great question. I love that question. Um, okay, yes, it is individual, like you said. For example, in my case, I recovered nearly perfect health just by a dietary change. And in reality, 80 plus percent of my health challenges were caused by emotional mental trauma. But if you look at America as a whole, I would say 80 percent of Americans will see perfect health just if they focus on their body. Just, and the body just means nutrition and detoxification, putting nutrients in, getting toxins out. 80% of Americans, if they do that, will get the results that they're looking for with their health. Then there will be 20% who will do that and say, hey, I still have a health challenge because it's not nutritional, it's not toxicity, it's emotions, it's, it's, it's mental, it's actually spiritual at the root cause. But for most people in America, because the food quality is so bad, like you said, for most of them, if they just address their body, then they'll see their health 
you know, return back to being what it's supposed to be, which is perfect. You're never supposed to get sick. No one's ever supposed to be sick. Being sick just means that you haven't learned how to take care of your health. And most people never learn. We don't learn it in school. Now, as a matter of fact, ironically, when you say that medical school may be one of the few places, the irony, they only get, uh, what, three hours of nutrition education and when nutrition is such a big factor of health, but it's just not part of a major curriculum for uh, medical schools. It's so true. Um, a recent study from uh, that Congress executed of American medical schools found that the average medical doctor, like you said, only gets about three hours of education in nutrition, which I'm quite certain is provided by the National Dairy Council. It's mm-hmm. just education in the four food groups and in baby formula, but scientific studies have shown that baby formula is not what we should be giving babies. We should be giving them mother's breast milk. So unfortunately, our doctors, who are heroes, don't get nutritional training. And I mean, I went to medical, uh, pre-medical school. I was pre-med, and I was in chemistry lab and biology lab with all these aspiring doctors, and I would ask them, why do you want to be a doctor? And they would say, well, I want to help people. Everyone said that. No one said, I want to have a nice car, I want to buy a big house, or I want to make my mom proud. No, they all wanted to be a doctor because they wanted to help people. And they spent a lot of money to go to learn how to help people, and they didn't learn that you need flax oil or omega-3s to balance brain chemistry and cure depression or to balance blood sugar. They didn't learn about these types of things, and it's not their fault. They just simply didn't get that training, and that's just the way that the system is set up right now. Well, that system, speaking of, I'm, I'm sure many people, many of the listeners here are know to the station, are very aware of health issues. Um, they're very, uh, they're very aware of how health, how we're impacted, uh, by these negative factors in our environment and in the system, quote, on our health. Um, it seems like pharmaceutical companies, obviously, and even food industries are kind of like, they're just trying to, really extort people's money, in my opinion, to to keep us from really being truly healthy. They make money off of our illnesses, unfortunately. <sighs> mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I've met a lot of doctors, nurses, and so on who've said just that. You know, they've said, you know, the, the industry is just about making money and it's not about really helping people. And it's sad to hear someone say, I went to medical school and I wish I didn't because... Mm. I didn't really get to learn how to make people healthy. I just learned how to prescribe drugs and do surgery, but that's not really addressing the root cause. I don't want to address people's symptoms. I want to make them actually healthy. And I'm actually grateful that I didn't go to medical school, even Mm -hmm. naturopathic medical school, because it's so Mm -hmm. expensive and it would have taken so much of my time that I ended up spending studying and researching on my own and found information and found answers that really works in real life and I've been able to help so many people. I've literally helped thousands and thousands of people already and I'm just starting my career, honestly. My goodness, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, you're just starting. You've been investigating and researching for like a decade or more from what I read and uh but you know, these these are long journeys. Huh? They're they're really they never end. You never quit learning. Um I have a qu- a personal question for you. I mentioned to you the other day about diabetes, I'm kind of borderline, and even though I watch, try to watch what I do, I don't know what's causing it, genetic kind of, but you mentioned, I was reading something about um, the name of it, you told me, maybe I can ask Merit, but for the listener audience as well, could you name the name of that product, because a lot of people struggle with this issue, what was something mineral, something greens, or what was it called? Oh, okay. Well, I do cover diabetes in my very first course, The Solution, which is one that comes before the foundation, the one that Ian was mentioning. Um, And I'd love to share with you, you know, a lot more about it if you're interested in it. We have time tonight. But you're mentioning Vitamineral Green, and Vitamineral Green is a green superfood. So it's a whole bunch of different green vegetables dehydrated into a powder form. And it's really rich in vitamins and minerals, so Vitamineral Green, which is crucial for Everything, I mean, every nutrient your body needs is actually in that jar. And vitamin oil green is carried at almost every health food store in America. It's at every Whole Foods and most major health food stores. The other um, green powders that I take, like Premier Greens, are not found at health food stores. So that's why in my free video on how to have more energy, I mentioned that one because I just want to make it really easy for people to just get started immediately and not have to order something and wait three days for it to come in the mail. Um, but if you want to get Premier Greens, you can order that um, from my company. Uh, but vitamin mineral green, I mean, you could go, you know, before it's too late tonight or tomorrow morning, go to the store and buy it and just 
start putting that into your water and your apple juice, and you'll see a big shift in how you feel. Um, Dr. Robert Morris said that he's, that's M-O-R-S-E, Dr. Robert mm-hmm. Morris, he said he's 100% effective at curing type 1 and type 2 diabetes. A lot of doctors are, actually. And he said that he believes it's just a chromium, which is a mineral, deficiency. Now, I don't 100% agree with that, but what he's saying is minerals are a big part of overcoming diabetes. But it, minerals are a big part of overcoming almost every health challenge because almost every American is severely mineral depleted and it causes all manner of problem. So it would be smart for anyone to just try taking vitamin mineral greens in. For most people, the result that they're going to see with any sort of green powder and putting lots of minerals in is they're going to see a lot more energy and they're going to see inflammation reducing or even going away. And inflammation could mean arthritis, it could mean tendonitis, it could mean swelling, it could mean gout, it could mean um, uh, an ulcer, like any sort of burning in the body is neutralized or reduced by minerals. So they may Mm -hmm. see that sort of benefit. I did hear inflammation. It seems like inflammation um, is a big factor in illness in many ways. Um, But would you say, for example, how about, what, what are some of your theories on cancer? This is a great question. Uh, I also cover that in my first course. So there's a lot of doctors who have extraordinary results with cancer just using nutrition, just adjusting the physical body, just looking at reducing the acidity in the body, putting minerals in to neutralize acid and stop putting acid in nutritionally and change the diet to an all alkaline diet and put lots of juice in and, you know, removing toxicity, removing acid through enemas and different ways of getting toxicity out. Like the Gerson method, for example, um, Dr. Dan Rogers said that they're 100% effective at curing type 1 and type two, type 1, stage 1 and stage 2 cancer with nutrition, 100% effective. And that they're, what, 70, 80% effective with stage 3 cancer and 39% effective with stage 4 cancer, which I is goodness, that's terminal. That's pretty good. That's supposed to be... Go home and write your will, you're going to die. And exactly. if you go to the Gerson Institute, you mm-hmm. have a 40% chance of surviving. Meanwhile, um, uh, there's a doctor out in North Carolina, Dr. Leonard Coldwell, who wrote a book called The Only Answer to Cancer. And uh, several of my clients have seen him speak at the Health Freedom Expo in Chicago and in Long Beach. And he says that he's 92.8% successful at curing cancer at any stage. My goodness, that's... Wow. You know, I'm going to put, I'm going to look for some of these links and maybe post them in the chat. What were the names of some of these doctors that have these doctor, you said, um, his name was, let me see. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. If you can backtrack a little bit. Sure, sure. Some of the so doctors doc, you Dr. Dan Rogers, he now runs the Gerson Institute. Oh, I've heard Mexico, of it. Okay. Right. Uh, Charlotte Gerson promotes it quite a bit. There's, there are scientific studies and trials that prove that they can cure cancer. They're in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Uh, because, you know, it's, <laughs> I don't need to get yes, into that, right? right. So they're in Mexico. Um, and then Dr. Leonard Coldwell wrote, wrote the book, The Only Answer to Cancer, C-O-L-D-W-E-L-L, Dr. Leonard Coldwell. And he said he's 92.8% effective at curing cancer, which is the same percentage as Dr. Hammer, and that's H-A-M-E-R. Mm-hmm. Um, Dr. Hammer was actually put in jail for... My people of cancer over in Europe, and in during the trial, they found that 6,000 out of 6,500 people that he treated were cured, or they didn't have cancer for five years after he saw them. And that's also 92.8 percent. Wow, that's Dr. Yeah. Hammer, huh? Yeah, Hammer is how it's pronounced. Hammer. Right? Unless okay. I'm wrong, I could be wrong. I'm not perfect over here. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, according to Dr. Hammer, the number one cause of cancer is a singular emotional trauma. Really? And, and usually within two years of that trauma, the cancer develops. That's his theory. And Dr. Coldwell's theory is that the cause of cancer is stress. So what is stress? Stress is anger, hatred, fear, rage, sadness, hurt, guilt. It's negative emotion. It's emotional pain. So Dr. Homer's, um wife witnessed the murder of their son. Oh, my goodness. Right? And so that's where this theory came from for him. And I've seen a lot of people who 
tried the nutritional route and it didn't seem to work for them. And it was really clear that, well, yeah, you're holding on to all this grief and all this pain. And I used to do uh, Reiki at the right. Optimum Health mm-hmm. Institute. For those that don't know, Reiki is a Japanese word that means light energy. So it's energy healing. And I've been practicing that for almost 20 years now. And mm-hmm. so I used to do it professionally at the Optimum Health Institute in San Diego where they give people the raw food diet and mm-hmm. enemas. And so people would come there. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but... I want to try those. They sound, you know, I've been taking a intestinal cleanser with a capsule form, but everyone say, well, you're doing it that direction, and you have to clean from the other. Would you agree? Not to kind of divert here, but would you agree you have to clean from both ends? Not to sound strange, but I mean, you know. <laughs> well, there, there's um, these books called the Dead Sea Scrolls, which mm-hmm. are books about Jesus that were found in the mid 700s, so like 748 A.D. And in these books about Jesus, he cures all the lepers by having them go on a raw food diet. And he tells them to do a seven-day water fast because they didn't have juicers 2,000 years ago. And to do, <laughs> right, they didn't have juicers, so he couldn't tell them to do, to do a juice fast. But he tells them to do enemas using a gourd and hanging it in a tree. So literally 2,000 years ago, Jesus is telling the lepers to do enemas. So you know, if the lepers can do it because Jesus says so, well, why can't we? And there's something wrong with putting water in the intestines and then taking it out and having, you know, toxicity come out with it. And right. uh, it's to me, if you're going to do a real cleanse, a real heavy detox, and you're going to have a lot of poison come out, you need to help your body do that. You need to support that process. And so putting water in the intestines and then pulling it back out does support the body. It does help take toxicity out. Some people think that's all you need to do, but water doesn't break up the really heavy, impacted stuff. Mm, Water's not going to okay. pull, you mm-hmm. know, hardened mucus that's as hard as a car tire out of your intestines. But if that stuff is starting to come out because you're taking the right herbs and things, then the water will help move it out, whereas your body may not have the strength to move all that stuff out on its own. My gosh. You know, I had heard something, uh, Arno about the power of, what do you call it, the, the intensity or the density of some of the toxins. Not, not to get too grotesque to the audience here, but we can be frank. Uh, the audience is very open-minded and curious. Um, I heard about how these toxins can build up within the intestinal walls and crevices and so forth, and it, is it true that they can be so dense? They could be like, like a rock? I mean, I, I heard things like this, but is that really the case? Well, Dr. Richard Anderson, who wrote um, Cleanse and Purify Thyself, book one and book two, which are great books on cleansing. If you read that book, the first one, you'll want to do a cleanse. It's so good. And he says that human beings have mucus in their body and the intestines that gets so hard that it's as hard as a car tire, like oh my really goodness. hard rubber. And I've seen it come out of myself. Oh, wow. And it's, like, it's like rubber. I'm like, holy crap. And like... It's not even Literally, holy crap. No, kidding. I'm sorry, I had to say that. I'm sorry. Yeah, it is holy crap. And uh-huh. I, I had white stuff come out, green stuff come out, and it's really interesting. If you go online and look at mucoid plaque, it's spelled mm-hmm. M-U-C-O-I-D-P-L-A-Q-U-E, you'll see all kinds of pictures of it. It's gnarly. And I've met people who did a all raw diet for 10 years. So that means they only ate fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds. Maybe they had coconut milkshakes and things like that, but no meat, nothing cooked for 10 years. Then they do one of these intestinal cleanses and they got ropes and ropes of gnarly stuff coming wow. out. doesn't come out by eating healthy or drinking water or water fasting or juice fasting or doing colonics. You actually have to take the right things to get it out. And when it comes out, it causes a huge change in people's health because that stuff is just nasty. Jeez. I mean, I heard about this, but... But would you say many people have this in their in their body? Everyone does, unless they've been eating super healthy since they were born. Okay, we have a break, and this is an amazing um, topic. And uh, we want to I want to ask a question about Jamaica flower root afterwards. So hang in there. Thank you. Um, hang in there, Arno and Nick, and everybody. We'll be right back after this break. All right.
opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host. Welcome back to Wild at Heart. I'm Noreen Halpin, and I hope you guys were tuning into this really amazing, amazing information. Um, we have Nick here, kind of looking around, and um, we have a, we have some really great callers, and we have a special gift tonight, Arno Garan, and uh, you know, uh, I see him trying to be living. I wanted to ask you a question. Somebody, a friend of mine in chat, had about. Do you know anything about Jamaican flour? Um, we were discussing this about diabetes, but I don't know what else you know about Jamaican flour in terms of health and any effects. I've never heard of Jamaican flour. <laughs> okay. Is that hibiscus tea? You know, I don't know. <laughs> I should Google it and find out. Yeah, um, it says hibiscus tea. Okay. Um, I don't know a lot about it. What I do know is, you know, it's high in antioxidants and it tastes really good. <laughs> okay. I think I've had it. And um, antioxidants. Okay, listeners. This is, antioxidants is a, a good um, source that you can get from. Hibiscus tea, which could also be Jamaica flour, but don't know that until I further research it. Um, yeah. Um, we, I want to maybe get into a couple other topics later, but for right now, you were discussing something about the emotional um Effects of health, um, that is like amazing to me because I think that there is a mind-body connection with health. There's in Asian medicine, they've always known this. I think, I think in the Western world too, they they used to know it, right? I think what happened is some of the the um, grandmas, you know, old uh, cures and so forth, have become kind of marginalized. They used to exist. Um, I think there is a mind-body connection, and people in the past uh, knew this. P- some people still in the globe right now know this as well. So you want to elaborate a little bit about what you found? Absolutely. Well, first of all, intuitively, we all know that stress causes illnesses. I mean, we, we hear it on TV and on the radio, but we don't always define what stress is. Well, if someone beat you up when you were a kid over and over again because they were drunk or they had their own anger issues or whatever and all those times you got beat up you felt angry you felt afraid you felt whatever you felt hurt sad and those emotions got held inside and held inside then 40 years later that same person who had all the abuse could develop cancer or heart disease or some sort of health challenge because inside stuck in there is all these uh, um, emotions and emotions are chemical. They are physical. They can be seen under a microscope. They can be measured. They are real. They're not imaginary. Feelings are not imaginary. They're real. And you can live your life pretending that they're not there. You can be a warrior and push them away. But that's not the real way of the warrior. Uh, I trained under one of the greatest martial arts masters in the world. And a true warrior addresses their feelings, honors their feelings. It doesn't mean that you allow your feelings to run your life. But if you have emotional pain from your past, it's your duty to face it and heal it and get it out of you. And I think in our culture, there's a a widespread agreement that there is no way to get them out permanently, that we just don't know how. But we do actually. We do actually know how to get old emotions out of the body. And sometimes we don't really believe that someone's emotional trauma from the past can be the real cause of their health challenge now. So I'll give you an example. I had a client named Allie Miller. And Allie developed IBS, that's irritable bowel syndrome, when she was 16. So what does that mean? It means that she had pain and constipation, like nothing was moving, and then all of a sudden diarrhea out of nowhere. And, I mean, I've had clients with IBS who said they couldn't drive an hour in the car because at any given moment they would have to run to the bathroom so they couldn't go on a road trip or anywhere as long as if they couldn't be near a bathroom because if they had to go, they had to go right then. Otherwise, they had to bring extra clothes with them. Like, it was that bad. Mm -hmm. And and Allie said that at 16, it was ruining her life. And so she read 
a bookcase full of books on health, and she became a raw vegan. So only fruits and vegetables, only nuts and seeds, no animals, nothing cooked, everything raw, and did tons of cleanses and detoxes and colonics and all the stuff we've been talking about. And after three years of 100% raw, no change. So two years of research, three years of eating raw, no change. She takes my most basic, basic course and finds out that she was severely mineral depleted because that happens when you cleanse, you use up minerals. So she started taking minerals. She no longer got dizzy at the gym. She found out that was the problem. But she still couldn't deal with the IBS. Nothing was working on it. And she sent me this long email and I told her, Ali, have you considered that the root cause of your IBS isn't physical? So she does a consultation with one of my consultants who goes through the same sort of process and says, well, Allie, it doesn't sound like your root cause is physical. Did you have any traumas occur to you near the time that your IBS started? Which is one way to get to the root cause. There's lots of other ways. And Allie said, yeah, I had a whole bunch of stuff happen. And so they went and erased all of the trauma that Allie experienced using a process called the seven steps to reprogramming yourself. And this is on a 30-minute call. They erased all of the emotions. In a 30-minute call? In one 30-minute wow. call over the phone, not even in person. They erased all the trauma. And so Allie got on to a teleconference with us the next that week and said, these are her words, the next day I woke up and my intestines worked perfectly. Wow. That's mm-hmm. good. Would you say the average person would be 30 minutes, give or take, or more? It depends. It depends on the specific trauma because if it happens over and over and over and over again, like, for example, I had a client named Mari who had an abusive parent, an alcoholic parent. She said her first memory was of being thrown into a wall at the age of three, and she did not have a single memory in her entire life where she wasn't in a state of panic. It was like one lifelong panic attack. She went to law school but never passed the bar because she didn't feel like she could function as an attorney, never had a boyfriend, was overweight, survived by drinking alcohol and taking pharmaceuticals. She said she spent $100,000 on therapists, seminars, books, audios, anything she could find to try to be normal because she was really messed up. She was always in a state of fear. And so she did one-on-ones with me every week and we still so we worked on it for about 50 to 60 minutes every week and she worked on it on her own and after about a month or two so maybe 10 sessions she texted me and said arno i'm not doing anything right now and i don't feel afraid i feel calm this is the first time in my life and then two days later she texted me again and said i still feel calm this is amazing. And then she wrote me this amazing letter where she said she lost 37 pounds because now she can eat healthy, which she never thought would happen. She went back and passed the bar and she's practicing law. She has a boyfriend and she's super happy. Amazing. And like her, her whole life changed because she finally was able to release all that fear. So it wasn't 20 minutes for her, right? And that was one specific pattern of being traumatized by someone just, you know, basically scaring the crap out of her all the time. So many people, I think, have this self. It doesn't even have to be paired. Jeez, the roots of these could be so various, you know. I think it's so common for human beings to have this issue. Emotional patterns? Well, yeah, to cause, to create uh, mental and physical maladies, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. So even if someone eats perfectly healthy, it's not going to erase their Mm -hmm. emotional patterns. And I've, I've seen people who ate an incredible diet who were overweight. I've seen people who ate an incredible diet and were jerks. <laughs> so like, <laughs> no amount of eating healthy will resolve someone's emotional traumas from their past. It can improve their emotional state dramatically because it will improve brain chemistry. I mean, people can be extraordinarily happy because they eat a healthy diet, but it's not going to heal, you know, the time that they got raped or it's not going to heal the time that the kids at school made fun of them or whatever it was that happened to them. Their parents got a divorce. Like whatever it was, those issues need to be dealt with at their core. And those are more mental or emotional root causes, not physical root causes. Right. And um, I wanted to, um, this is amazing, this whole issue of any emotions. I think it's so, it always made sense to me. It always resonated with me. Um, when When you consult or when you discuss these issues with clients or just people that you know, um, do you ever, do you ever get intuitions about whether an individual is suffering because of their emotional state or what they're ingesting or both? Or 
Can you pick up on some of that yourself or? Yeah. Well, in, in this solution, that's my first course. I go over the three ways to find root cause. And my favorite way is called medical intuition. Have you ever heard of that? I have heard of the term, yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome, yeah. So I read Carolyn Mace's book. It's called the NYSS for the listeners that don't know. Carolyn Mace, um, Anatomy of the Spirit, over 20 years ago. And I was so blown away by her story about how she um, gave this guy a medical intuitive reading over the phone and told him the reason why he had AIDS was because he was gay, wouldn't tell his dad. And so she had him work with her friend who was a holistic health practitioner, no idea what they did, and he went and told his dad he was gay. And six weeks later, he called her and told her that he no longer had any symptoms and he tested negative for HIV. And I was just like, holy crap. Again, there's that word. I want to know, I want to be just like her. I really just wanted to be just like that. And it took me eight years of training to get to the point where I felt like I could do it just as well. As in that, in that example. And so that was really the key of my consulting practice and how I was so successful. I, I would, my, my ideal client was the person that no one could help. Uh, my ideal client was the mm, person. That's a good way to look at it. Oh, that was literally written out. Like, my ideal mm-hmm. client is a person that no one can help, that has seen everyone, has tried everything, but still has hope and wants to get better and is willing to work at it. That was who I attracted because that's what I told the universe I wanted. So I'd attract these people that had like been to everyone and taken every kind of medication who no one could help. And I would give them a reading and I would find out what the real root cause was. And then I would create their program based on that. So it's the same philosophy. What's the root cause? It can be physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual. And then what are the tools to address it? And I fortunately have a lot of tools so I could address any type of root cause. And I'd give them their program. Sometimes I'd work with them on it. Sometimes they would just get a one-hour session. They'd go off on their own, and then they'd let me know later that it worked. And so, yeah, I totally get intuitions about what's going on with someone and what the real cause is when I'm doing one-on-ones. And when I train practitioners, I train them to use all three of the methods to find root cause, but I really want people to become medical intuitives. And a lot of my practitioners are amazing intuitives and so I feel really confident sending you know clients to them because they they can just tell right away when they look at people oh your dad was this or that to you wasn't he and they can start to see what's going on underneath you know the surface and help them get to the real causes and then then actually address them and it's really fabulous to hear from my practitioners the results that they're getting with people because then I feel like I'm making a huge difference because I'm not even talking to people and they're getting these results that are unbelievable I, um, I feel right now that what you're talking about is also kind of part of our, our evolution right now. The stage in, you know, human life on this globe is like we're becoming more in tune with these, you know, aspects of ourselves and, um, medical intuition is very key. And I, I don't believe, this is my theory, I don't believe that that puts the quote medical doctors out of business. In fact, I have a theory that what this all means, this whole thing, is this kind of like emerging of modern medicine with ancient ways, holistic practices. Is I don't feel that the two we were talking earlier about medical school, on that medical school. I don't feel that these two seemingly separate um, entities necessarily have to be ad- adversaries. I think they can. I think it's actually almost inevitable, in my opinion, that the two converge into one stream. It's almost like. They can't fight each other. There's a need for something there in one school or the other. You know, whether you have um, a car accident, trauma, you need emergency uh, surgery, you're going to have to go to the hospital. That's your standard, you know, you're going to run into standard um, medical doctors and surgeons. Fine. you got to have it, right? you got to have it. But, you know, if you have diabetes or cancer, uh, some other ways like chemo don't really work, as we know. So I think it's really inevitable that the two – the two schools of thought merge. I, I, I mean, people right now they oh they never will. They hate each other. They're adversaries. No, I, I really I see. As a matter of fact, very enlightened doctors now and days I think see the path and are starting to to ride the wave right now. Well, my desire in developing my training program was always just to make sure that no one ever was would ever have to be as sick as I was. My desire was to help people. And when we have a medical system that is designed to make you better permanently so that you don't need them anymore, then you'll see exactly what you're saying, integration of the best of every methodology. I mean, Mm -hmm. if someone, if someone swallow, like, let's say a five-year-old swallows a crayon. Yeah. 
well, you need a, to have a camera and like a tube to go mm-hmm. down in there exactly. and take it out. Well, I don't know of any like, I don't know, sh- shaman who have those, mm-hmm. but I know Western medical doctors have those. And that's awesome that they can do. That's amazing, yes. right? So there's lots of great tools within Western medicine, but they're also missing a lot of tools. Like, sure. do, do they give their clients herbs to get all the plaque out of their intestines? No. Do they know how to remove old emotions permanently? Do they even look at that as a potential root cause? Do they know about mineralization to reduce inflammation? They may not have this information, so they're missing a bunch of tools. But if we could combine all the tools together, we would create a truly modern form of medicine, and I agree it is, it is inevitable. You know, I think it is inevitable, but to me, there's my last comment on it, is that what's funny to me about it is is the <laughs> adversarial, you know, um, dichotomy between the two and the and maybe in some cases even mudslinging or oh you know that's I'm thinking no this is all going to converge into one understanding it's inevitable as you say um and also the intuitive part is maybe hit or miss but that doesn't mean that it's not accurate I know it's not something that could be scientifically gauged necessarily although I say that you know with with a footnote or a disclaimer necessarily but um yeah, intuitive medical um, systems are also becoming, I think, you know, just a basic listening, listen to your body, right? That's like a real basic medical intuition um, practice right there, listen to your body. Absolutely. Well, when I did medical intuition, if someone signed up for three months with me, they would go to a friend of mine who did um, biofeedback sometimes called the SKIO machine, S-K-I-O, sometimes called the QX machine, um, biofeedback. And there's other things now like the SKIO, S-K-I-O machine, the Azara machine. And they'd go to a biofeedback practitioner and they would get a reading which is based in quantum physics. Like the machine would read their energy field and Mm -hmm. give them a, a printout of what their root causes are. And then we'd compare that to my intuitive reading. And this was the best part. It would always be the same. You know, you actually have something to verify or validate your, yeah. yeah. And then the client's like, well, obviously it's true. Um, in Dr., what's his name? Dr. Br- uh, Dick Sutton's training. I don't even no, know. No, Dick Sutton, yes. I've followed him for years. He lives in Malibu, yeah. Yeah, I love Dick Sutton. So in one of his courses, he talks about how the U.S. government uses psychics to spy on other countries, and they'll have 10 intuitives because they're 95% accurate. So 9 or 10 out of 10 would get the exact same answer. So, you know, in that specific example, he's saying it's 95% accurate. So why not use it? And if you're 5% off, well, that's why you have modern science, and that's why you also use more than one intuitive on a specific client to see what's going on. It's a lot faster if I can tell you specifically, hey, that time when you were 14 and your dad raped you, that's the reason why you have breast cancer. That is very fast and very specific versus what else can you do that's that fast to get to the real answer. I'm not saying that's ever happened necessarily, although that's a very legitimate possibility. That's an amazing um, analysis. We have with us Heather Holman. Hey, Heather. Hi, Noreen. Hi. You have a comment or a question for Arno or anything on your mind? Oh, no, not yet. Okay. Yeah, I, was, I, mm-hmm. I was just listening and I was fascinated, and so I, I mean, I'm sure I do have questions, but I'm not ready yet. Right, and your Heather is very, um, many of us on this issue know she's very also uh, in tune with um, uh, medical, natural medical cures. Uh, she's like me. She's used manuka or <laughs> manuka honey and, and other kinds of um, remedies at home. She's really known for that. <laughs> you don't want me saying Heather. Yeah, no, no, honey. not at all. Yeah, the one from New Zealand is really awesome. Um, well, I like to incorporate a lot of things. I like some southern folk medicine incorporated with some, you know, natural healings, and then also some alternative methods as well. Mm-hmm. I really like um, Ayurveda is my favorite. Yeah, that, that's another type, too. Um, and they, they incorporated oils, too. Um, I don't know if they're into ingesting them. I saw some video with Ayurveda where they poured the oil on a person's forehead. And it says some kind of a, a um, system that they use. Um, Arno, are you familiar with the, when you're talking about oils, especially omega oils and so forth, you're talking internally, are you familiar with some of these external uses of oils for health or? Well, your skin eats whatever you put on it. Mm-hmm. And in fact, if you put it on your skin, it goes right in because if you eat it, then your liver and your kidneys have a chance to digest it. 
But if you put it directly on the skin, that, that doesn't happen. So it just goes directly into your body. So if you go get a massage, you know, bring your own oil with you. Bring your own coconut butter or coconut oil or olive oil or whatever you've got and don't be afraid to add essential oils to it like lavender. And those oils are going to absorb right into your skin and your body's going to eat them. And yes, it is going to go into your brain or wherever your body needs to have those oils. So if you've got an issue of, you know, the brain is lacking in fat, and by the way, there are studies on coconut oil where they stopped Alzheimer's by giving it to people. Oh, very good. Because your brain needs a lot of fat to function properly. So if they're putting oil right on your head, well, your your body's going to suck that right in, and it's awesome. This is also why it's really important that all your personal care products are non-toxic, because if you're taking a shower and you're putting poison on yourself, on your skin, it's going in your body. And you want to just put really healthy things on your body that you would eat. If you wouldn't eat it, don't put it on your body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, yeah, I do massage therapy on the side too. So I, I incorporate some of the things you're talking about. Um, I, I was aware about how like the toxicity of some healthcare products can be. I try to use natural ones. Sometimes I kind of cave and I don't know when it comes to shampoo, I just grab something that's real basic, but I've tried to use a green Castile soap for my hair. Um, but it's important. I'm glad you mentioned the head. I'm glad you did because I think we forget that sometimes what we put on our head seeks right into our skull and into our brain. So you just reminded me, I know maybe I should continue using green soap or something that's more, um, you know, natural. Noreen, mm-hmm. you can use soap nuts for your hair. Soap nuts. Those are awesome. Mm-hmm. And you, you, you ordered them online, right, Heather? You did? That's yeah, I put a link into our Skype. I'll put it in our, our general chat room. Chat, yeah, you can do that. But um, you can use it for laundry soap, but I've used it for shampoo, and it makes your hair really squeaky clean. Oh. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Soap awesome. nut. Uh, do they give you a large volume for, when they mail it to you? Is it coming to well, big bag? Well, I think bag? that, like, if, so if you are, like, a bag of them, um, mm-hmm. in that, in the cloth bag, I think you're just supposed to keep throwing that in your laundry. Okay. Um, I, I, but, um, when I make the shampoo, I use like five or six of them at a time. I make like a quart or two because it's like something you have to keep it refrigerated if you're not going to use it right away, you know? So you make little bits at a time. They always make, um, the powder. You can make it, uh, each time you go to wash your hair, you can make a different powder. Okay. Uh, it, yeah, it's fluffy. It's fluffed up like marshmallows. Thank you very much. Thanks for that. Uh, Arnold, there's somebody in chat has a question. Uh, Bernard says, could you please ask about magnesium oil transdermally for inflammation? That's a question. That's a great question. Um, there is a magnesium oil that I like that's made by Amica, O-M-I-C-A, Amica Organics. You can order it from my, from my company if you want. I think they have it at Erwan in L.A. I don't know if there's any other grocery store that carries it. You can also order it directly from their website, Amica Organics. Uh, magnesium oil is best or magnesium itself is best ingested through the skin, so it's great to use magnesium oil if you want to get magnesium into the body. Magnesium is super important for a lot of things, uh, calming, emotional detox. When your body releases old emotions, it needs magnesium to help mm, flush okay. that out. It'll, your body will actually use magnesium when it releases old emotions chemically, which can even cause a pain in the stomach area if you're too depleted of mm. magnesium. People can have anxiety for lack of magnesium, so it's extremely important whenever you're doing emotional work to put lots of uh, magnesium into your body, whether you take it orally or through the skin's best. Um, a really cost-effective way is just to go to the store and buy Epsom salt because that's actually magnesium, but it's not the best kind of magnesium. I've used it. Yeah, it's not. Okay. You know, it's still really great, and people will notice that they'll feel better, and that's, mm-hmm. you know, it's very cost-effective. It doesn't. It cost is. It's money. not very much. Yeah, it's, it's when, yeah, I like that. Sometimes yeah. they can get kind of expensive, some different oils. They mm. can get up there. Yeah. Exactly. But um, yesterday in our chat room, everybody, uh, quite a few people were talking about thieves oil, and maybe you know about that. Yeah, I mentioned it earlier because it's, someone asked about how to not get sick during the holidays, and right. I was saying you could get a diffuser and put On Guard, which is it's not exactly thieves oil because that's the, um, I think it's uh, what is it? Young Living makes thieves oil. Young Living Essential Oils, but doTERRA makes a, something called On Guard, and it's a similar thing. I mean, basically, thieves oil kills bacteria, virus, viruses, and so on. So that's they call it the thieves oil because 
thieves would use it so they could go in and rob the dead bodies of those in the Black Plague because they wouldn't get the plague. Oh, people, I get that now. Right? So half of Europe died from this big plague and the thieves. So with thieves oh, oil, what the, um, what the, the plague doctors would put in their beak? Hmm. Because I know they, they would put, they would put like a, a cloth or something with all these oils and that must have been what they put in their beaks. So that's why they wore those masks. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So then that way the thieves oil is basically protecting them from breathing in anything that they don't want. So, uh-huh. so if you have a diffuser that you can get from the health food store, like doTERRA makes on guard, you can get it from them. They make diffusers. You plug that into your house. You plug it into your office. You put some on guard or you could use thieves oil and put that in there and it diffuses into the air. Now no one can get sick in that environment. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. I had a washing machine that kind of smelled moldy and I didn't know you were supposed to like drain the water out of it. And I fixed it by putting thieves oil in it. It just killed all the mold. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's understandable. Mm-hmm. I wonder if thyme, white thyme is in it because that, that'll kill anything. I, I, in my experience, anything is just dead. I don't remember what's in it. I know cinnamon and clove oil. I wouldn't mm-hmm. be surprised if thyme is one of the, I think it's five oils though, in thieves oil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then another one of my favorites is birch, but it gets kind of pricey too. Sometimes I can't afford it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you guys, um, we were talking about Epsom salts earlier, you guys, a little bit. I, um, I also find our no, and I think you guys would agree that Epsom salts or anything like that has a high level of the negative ions. That's kind of what I feel when I use them. Um, they release them. Would you say some of these properties have this effect of releasing negative ions, which is very good for your health? Yeah, you know, it does, especially when you're in the bath. It's just, it's cleansing more than just um, toxicity from the body. It's also cleansing your energy field or your or your auric field when you mix water with minerals. And then your body needs minerals like magnesium to hold a higher vibration. So when you release, uh, whether it's physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual, when you release toxicity and you want to bring in the new positive energy and actually raise the vibration of your total being, your body physically needs minerals, which are, if you think of them like crystals, to hold that higher energy. And so when you're doing, whether it's emotional detoxing or doing energy work or massage, you know, taking an Epsom salt bath, or there's so many other ways to make, remineralize, you can help the body to upgrade and hold that higher vibration. And so it makes sense that you're releasing negative energy in multiple ways, including just negative ions and so on. Mm-hmm. Well, they say the negative ions are good for us, right? The po- you don't want positive ions. You want the negative, like the ionizer, but you, you want to be near yeah. the ocean. You want to get all the negative ions or ions, how you pronounce it. You right. can. So yeah. I was thinking Epsom and magnesium is another, you know, source. It seems like that to me. Whenever oh. I'm surrounded by it, I can feel that energy. Um, I have a kind of off the wall question. We were talking about healthcare personal products. I um yeah, this is this is kinda of interesting. I uh because I'm on a budget like many people, um, and I always try to look for like all around things that you can use in, for many uh, purposes. And for when guests come to my house or even for myself for cleaning my hands quickly or anything like that, what is your opinion? And this is I only ask this because they claim this is a very old company and that they're they claim to be pure, pure product. What do you think of ivory soap? And I know I just said a name brand on air, but who cares? Do you have any opinion about ivory soap? They claim it's a very old recipe quote, I don't know what other word or concoction from Oh, over a century ago, and they claim it to be pure, 99% pure. Do you have any opinion about that? Because I use that kind of for multi-purpose, last-minute cleansing. But I always read the label. I always want to know what the ingredients are. Mm-hmm. And if I don't know the ingredient, I'll look it up. And if, okay. not, if there's one ingredient that isn't good, then why would I choose that one when there's so many other ones that are totally pure? And there's lots of other pure ones that are really affordable and not that expensive. Can you just throw out a few names for because I think a lot of people on budgets really want to cleanse in a very, you know, what do you call it, non-toxic way, but they can't afford super fancy soap. So can you throw out a few names off off the top of your head? Oh, yeah. Well, a really classic affordable one is Dr. Bronner's. Okay. 
right? It comes in liquid form, and usually you can buy a big, huge quart of it at every health food store, mm-hmm. and that's not expensive at all. Um, my favorite soap is called Miracle 2. You can't buy it in a health food store. Uh, I know that Robin Jones has it at the Living Temple. Oh, so yeah, 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 my friend, yeah. Mm-hmm. Here in Huntington Beach. Mm-hmm. And there's a whole amazing story behind that whole company and how it was created, but that soap, makes your body feel fantastic. At least that's my experience of it. So that's my favorite one. But there's so many others out there that, I mean, if you just go to your health food store, there's a whole rack of soaps, and almost all of them are going to be decent. And just read the label, see what's in it. It should be natural. You know, essential oils kill bacteria and so on. So that's really what it should be based in. Um, Dr. Brummer, I think I'm familiar. Would that be the one that he... um uh, what was the base of that? It's an old recipe, isn't that one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's peppermint oil is his main. Is group. that it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a classic hippie mm-hmm. move. You know, I've seen hippies at big festivals. You know, like brushing their teeth with it and washing their hair with it, and it's all it's. Oh, it's really, stuff. Dr. Bummer? Hmm, wow. Mm-hmm. Is that the one that's kind of like a um, orangish color? I think so, yeah. There's different flavors now. Or gold. Mm-hmm. And it has tons of, like, small writing all over it with propaganda about how you should save the environment and stuff like that. Well, <laughs> I think I've seen it. I, I had something, I thought something similar to that, um, but I don't think it was this one, but I've seen this one. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, peppermint. Peppermint's a good cleanser, too. Mm-hmm. Isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Would you say it's almost almost on level of antioxidant cleansing, or just more like just generic, like a general cleanser? Antiseptic, well, that's the word. Yeah, um, peppermint, and there's so many other oils that are antiseptic. You know, mm-hmm. all the ones in thieves oil, for example. Um, there's a body butter I have that has lime oil. Mm-hmm. Oh, lime oil. oil. Mm-hmm. Tangerine oil, and I know those oils are in there as the preservative because bacteria is not going to be able to grow in that raw. Oil, it doesn't have any preservatives because it has those oils in it. Mm, okay. I see how that works. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Um, what is your take on a dimentaceous earth? Dimentaceous earth, also called DE, is fantastic. And one of the best things about dimentaceous earth is that you can get rid of bed bugs with it. Oh, really? And it's a huge deal because if, if anyone ever has that problem, I mean, it's like life ruining. I, I've known people who moved out of their apartment, who got rid of all their furniture and all their clothes, Jeez. and like had bites forever, and they could never figure out how to get rid of it. And diamondaceous earth will get rid of it like in two days, and you don't have to burn your stuff. You don't have to get rid of your bed. <laughs> you don't God. have to move. And I, a friend of mine got it, got bed, bed bugs, and um. The instructions that we found online were not really accurate. It's like people thought that bed bugs were in the bed, but they're not. They're actually on people. They live on people. So all you do is you put the diamantaceous earth all over. When you take a shower, as soon as you get out, put it back on yourself. And in 48 hours, you will not have bed bugs anymore. That is such a huge deal for people who now, ever have Now, if you take it bug. internally, could you prevent even getting bed bugs in the first place? Well, they live in your skin, so it doesn't matter if that diamond tissue earth is inside. Right. Or well, I was thinking maybe if there's something in your in your digestive or something in your body that they would kind of it would deter them from you only, know only if they were inside your intestinal tract, which they don't go in oh. there. But okay. you're on the right track with it because diamond tissue earth kills bugs and things. So if you have parasites inside that are big enough to eat the diamantaceous earth, it'll kill them too. So you can take it orally to kill parasites to some degree. It's not going to necessarily get all the parasites out of your body, but intestinal parasites. And then apparently it's great for remineralizing the body. But it's also, like if you have pets, you put it on your cat or on your dog and it kills fleas, it kills ticks. Like You can get rid of all the chemical stuff and the expensive stuff for killing bugs on your on your pets and on yourself and you can use that. So oh yeah, because all those products are all something, all these chemicals, anyways, and they really don't work. They just continue. It makes it allows it to continue in some form. Right. Whereas if you just put a little bit of diamantaceous earth on your cat or your dog, bye bye fleas, and it's not harmful. I mean, it's it's really affordable. You can buy it at the at the pet store. Just remember, if you if anyone wants to take it orally, make sure you buy the. Uh, the kind that can be taken orally that's, you know, made for human consumption because there's some that you're not supposed to eat. Um, and I know people who've put it in their smoothies and, you know, it's it's awesome and so, so cheap. 
It mm-hmm. is. That's a great thing to know. And, and it, it only makes sense that something that simple would be the solution. <laughs> right. All right. Yeah, that's another issue, too. Um, some properties are not very expensive because they're, they, I don't know how they figured out how to create the um, formulas to, you know, make them effective. And then some things you go with a velvet sword and it's like, wow, there's a lot of money. And I have questions as to why, you know, why is it that some things are so, um, why are some properties that maybe is it the way they make them because they're unrefined or, you know, why are some things so much more? Maybe obviously some properties and um, and so forth are more difficult or rare. I can see where that can be a factor in cost. You know, some kind of rare uh, essential flower may be very difficult to extract and difficult to find and so forth. Um, or do you think it's the company? And if anybody has an opinion about that, feel free to mention because that always strikes me as I, I question why. Why is that? I can share about that. Mm-hmm. In general, it does depend on how easy it is to get the main ingredient. Like diamond mm-hmm. tissue earth is just more abundant and easier to come by. So in general, that's the main reason. But not always. Sometimes a product is more expensive because of the way they make it. Uh, there was a study done at Berkeley on the supplements and vitamins at the health food store, and they found that 97.5% of them were bad for your body. And it's, e- it's easy to understand why. Um, when a company wants to make supplements, whether it's a tablet or a capsule, the standard manufacturing process requires them to use binders and fillers. So they put something into, like let's say they want to encapsulate a bunch of different herbs. Well, they take the herbs, they dry them, they grind them into a powder, and they mix it all together. And then to get that powder to go into a capsule, they add things like talcum powder or magnesium stearate and that helps to get into the capsule. And that's standard. When you buy an encapsulation machine, the manufacturer sends a rep out that shows you where to add the talcum powder. And really? The that's huh. standard in the industry. Okay. If you go to the health store and you look at other ingredients on pretty much any bottle, it's going to say magnesium stearate. And they don't usually add talcum powder. That's usually in it, too. I mean, they don't not that they don't add it to their product, they don't mm-hmm. add it to the label. And sometimes you'll see, see things like titanium dioxide and so on. Those are all fillers that are meant to help encapsulate the product. The problem is those fillers are toxic. And when you when you add a little bit of toxicity to a lot of something really good, the body... It ruins says, it, <laughs> basically. It's worse than that because the body says, hey, look at this awesome B vitamin. We're starving to death for B vitamins. Let's let that into the cell. Let's allow this in, all the way in. Oh, there's some poison in there. Well, too bad. No, the poison got all the way in. Whereas if you just ate magnesium stearate by itself, your body would go, oh, that's toxic. Get rid of it. But because it's with something really good, now it gets into your cells. And so it's worse. It's like letting the, the villain into the the good guy's mansion, you know, he snuck in through the gates because he got in with all the good guys in their car. So it's actually very important that when you're taking high-quality concentrated nutrients in that it's totally pure. So, for example, um, Dr. Marshall, who uh, runs a company called Premier Research Labs, they have a $100,000 machine that will scan every single drum of raw product and if it has radiation, it'll flag it. This has been irradiated. Oh, no, it's not oh, irradiated. Oh, my goodness. No. Wow. We, we don't care what you say. We know for a fact this has been irradiated because this machine will say so. This has got mercury in it. This has got whatever. Mm. And they muscle test every single okay. um, of raw product. So if it muscle tests off, then they'll find out why. And they actually had a barrel of reishi mushroom come in, and they found it. the machine flagged it, but it looked fine. They muscle tested it, tested off. And they finally figured out that it wasn't reishi mushroom. Mm. It was actually mattress filler. Jeez, really? My goodness. Yeah. So everyone who thought they were putting reishi mushroom into the product for their clients and selling mm-hmm. it wherever they were selling it, who bought it from the same company, was actually giving people mattress filler. My whereas, goodness. Whereas Dr. Horrible. Marshall, because he's only one of two manufacturers in the country that have this machine, his products are not never going to have anything toxic in them. And then he communicates with the farmers as to picking the product at the right time so they're actually ripe. They don't put any fillers or binders into their product. They even muscle test the capsule to make no sure kidding. that the capsule My itself goodness. isn't toxic. And then the bottle itself is spent a hundred grand just to make bottles. Wow. 
where no light that's that's harmful to the food can get in, the nitrogen flushes. There's no air in the bottle. So, like, it's literally preserved in the most pristine way. And then they even make the label on the bottle oh specifically goodness. so that it has the highest vibration. Oh. They muscle test every single word on every single bottle. Wow, talk sure. about details. Right? Every single product is like that from his company. So it's going to be more expensive if you buy it from him. <laughs> I can see and we're being kind of facetious for this truth in this. It's unbelievable, the detail. My goodness, wow. I didn't the even care. Thing. Yeah. And mm-hmm. see, the thing is, when they don't use magnesium stearate, Dr. Marshall says that it it causes their machines to only run at 85% of capacity. So let's say the machines cost a million dollars then they can only produce 85% as much with the amount of time they have on that million-dollar machine because they refuse to use toxins to make the product. So here's what happens with a lot of studies. You'll get a product that they have have all these studies that prove that it's amazing. And then I get the bottle, and I'm like, this is a tablet? And they're like, yeah, it's a tablet. I'm like, there's almost no chance this product's good for you. So you're you're thinking not only is it... Say not even 25% effective. It's just not effective. Hmm. Or talk. Sometimes, sometimes the product will still be effective in the short term because it has all those positive nutrients. But because it has some toxicity in the long term, it starts to cause DNA damage and starts mm-hmm. to be harmful. So it's not something you want to take every day for 30 years or 50 years. Mm-hmm. You want everything to be pure and good for you that you're taking. But if something is a tablet, they make tablets by compressing them with a lot of power, a lot of pressure, and high heat along with fillers and binders to force something that's a powder into a tablet and make it stay a tablet. I only, I only know of a couple of companies that figured out how to make a tablet without it being poisonous. One of them, they have a patent on how they make a tablet. No kidding. Hmm. How do you make a tablet without adding anything poisonous to it to make it so a lot of times you see a product and they say they have all these studies that say it does this and that but those are done with the product in powder form not with the product after they've made it into a tablet you know i know you have so much detailed uh, information and i know i put your uh website in the chat room but can you also name a few of your books or publications you did and i'll jot them down and try to put them in chat because does it contain a lot of this or, I mean, you know, a general type of information and so forth. I'd like to put it in there. Sure. Well, I have uh, 40 days of training. I have a training program that's 10 courses, and it's 40 days long. It goes in a specific order. So it's like when you learn to read, first you learn ABCs, and then you learn how to do small words, and eventually you learn how to read Shakespeare. So my, my mm-hmm. training is the same way. Uh, it's very heavy on the physical body in the first two courses, and then it goes more and more heavier into emotional, mental, spiritual. But even on the very first day of my training, we start getting into emotional and mental health and resolving those kinds of issues. And my first course is called The Solution. And if you go to my website, there's literally a whole tab called The Solution. You can read all about that course, and it's actually um, available to you globally. I mean, all you have to do is sign up for it, and then you can just press play on your phone if you have a smartphone, and you can listen to it in your car when you're driving. Anywhere in the world, you get it instantly. Well, I don't know how long it takes for you to get it, like a few minutes, but if you have a computer, if you have a tablet, if you have a smartphone, anywhere in the world, if you speak English, then you can get my training, and you don't have to wait. The gal that edited my courses is in Greece, and she I already have three testimonials from her. <laughs> One day she emailed me and she's like, oh, no, I can't work on editing your training today because I'm sick and I can't get out of bed. And then a few hours later she wrote me, never mind, I used your information and I'm better now. So that would be wow. the place to start with my information is the solution. Um, within my courses, there are several books. Like if you get my second course, The Foundation, you'll get my recipe book. And there's about 20 or something articles I've written, like how to cleanse the body without cleansing reactions, how to overcome addictions without willpower. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the seven steps to reprogramming yourself, which is that process. That's one of four processes that I teach that no one else teaches on how to erase negative emotions. Two of them I created. Um, online, you can get my weight loss book, Why You Don't Lose Weight and How You Can. But the place to start, really, is is with my course. Um, also, if you go to my website and just put in your email, so it's totalhealthmasteryusa.com. If you just put in your email, you'll get a free email for me every single um, every single week, and it's a free health tip. It's the top 50 health secrets. So every week you get a different health secret. 
one of them is, you know, my anti-aging program. And one of them is like, you know, how to, how to lose weight without changing your diet or exercising more. Like tips like that. You'll get one every week for a year for free. And you also get my 20 minute video on how to have more energy. So that's, you just get that. If you just I think that email. was one of the things I first saw was that video. It was interesting where I first heard about the mineral powder. Mm-hmm. Um, it said in here in chat, somebody posted that you have a Twitter. So it's twitter.com, um, slash Arno go, go wrong. That's yeah. your Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> somebody found your Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. It's A-R-N-O-U-X and then G-O-R-A-N. It's go ran. Like go ran. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Go wrong. Yes. It's not go wrong. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. But yeah, go wrong. So yeah, Twitter. I'm also on Facebook. So you facebook.com forward slash total health mastery. You can be my friend or no go wrong. I'm sorry. I'm muting while I type because I usually, <laughs> you know, I used to be able to type and I think it's because my friend fixed my mic to make it better so now that is better you can hear everything because you said that would type like crazy and i'd be asking people can you hear me type oh no 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 but now heather's saying i can hear you type so every time i type i have to mute so <laughs> it's, like, it's such a oh otherwise you're blah, 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 you know and i go into the chat room right so i'm like checking and reading and yeah I, that's where i saw your twitter so you'll be getting some tweets possibly or not I have another good. question though. Oh, yeah. I, mean, um, mm-hmm. I was going to ask your guest is if he knows what pycnogenols are and if they are um, worth talking about or taking. I've never heard of pycnogenols. Pycnogenols. Oh. The reason why I ask is because I have an eye um, condition, so I'm always wanting to try to find the cure to prevent my further blindness. You know. Okay. Well, I'm sure a lot of you know, Californians would tell you to smoke pot, but I'm going to give you some things that might help. Um, first of all, when you say you have a eye condition, is is it just your like your vision's going bad? No, I have um, a condition. It's called keratoconus. Okay. But what are, what are you actually experiencing? Like, um, like ghosting of images. A lot of like, like I'm wearing a. 3D glasses, or I'm watching, like, everything's, like, three-dimensional, but I need to put the glasses on. It's kind of hard to explain. It's like opening your eyes under the water, but everything, like, I see is underwater, kind of. Mm-hmm. Is it both your eyes or just one of them? Both of them. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a mixture. It's, a, like, stigmatism on top of being a, a genetically um, predisposed and... You know, eye rubbing, persistent eye rubbing is probably what did me in and sitting too close to the TV when I was little, but it's just a number of things where the cornea um, droops forward. I've, I've had people who said they had spots in their vision mm-hmm. or had had to wear night glasses or driving glasses and had it totally go away sometimes within a month. And a lot of times it's the brain, not the actual eyeball itself. It doesn't sound like your issue is the muscles squeezing the eyeball out of shape, which is what causes most people's vision to go bad. And if that is someone's issue, um, you can look up Dr. Quackenbush. It's Dr. Uh, Dr. Yates, Y-A-T-E-S, who created a program that fixes like every type of vision problem. Although your vision problem might be more of a brain problem. No, it, it used to be called, back in the 20s, it used to be called corneal coning. Okay. So they're so they're saying it's really the, actually the eye itself and not mm-hmm. the brain. Yeah, it's a condition of the cornea, and um, the only like surgery. I guess there's some new treatments that um, they thought of, but they're really expensive and invasive. Mm-hmm. Um, but normally, what like what they think about or the FDA thinks about it so far is that it's just it can be um, solved with a corneal transplant from a donor. But then even after you get it, or I got a transplant from a donor, I would still continue to develop cracticonus in the new cornea. So then that's not going to address the root cause. The cornea right. is messed up, but there's something causing it to be messed up. So what's the point right. of replacing that? Why not find out what's causing it to be messed up, and then, in fact, the body would just fix the cornea you have now? Yeah, you know, you and, know and you, I know there's a solution. There is. And that's the first thing is that you know there is one. So now the secret is how do we find it? What is the solution, <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. Right. So it's always like, what's the real cause of it? You know, is it because you had such a horrible trauma that there's something in life you don't want to see, or is it really that you have mercury poisoning in the brain? 
I think it ultimately it has something to do with the sun. Why do you say that? Well, because you know you're not supposed to look at at the sun, and um, the way that everything is a lot brighter. The sun, like I can't do night driving. Um, my eyes, um, when I get the contacts that I use and they're new, like I have to have them out by the time the sun goes down because when the sun goes down, I can barely get them out of my eyes. Like something happens from the daytime to nighttime with this condition that they haven't um, looked into. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that might be the cause. That might just be one of the symptoms you experience because your vision isn't working as well as it can or as well as it could. Right. So the question is, what's the real cause? You know, and I would recommend that you talk to someone who can help you figure out the cause, and then you'll be able to figure out the plan. So if, if the cause really is heavy metal toxicity in the brain, and by the way, that wouldn't be unusual. Um, mm-hmm. Dr. Rita Ellenthorpe, who's in Tustin, she's written several books on heavy metal poisoning. That's her whole deal. She's been studying it for 30 years. It sounds she, like in Tustin, California, yeah. Now, yeah. would heavy metal poisoning, would that cause you to have the um, like constant ringing in the ears? Possibly. Um, she says that every single American has heavy metals in their body and that six out of 10 or 59% have heavy metal poisoning of some kind. Like they have symptoms of heavy metal toxicity. Uh, there's a doctor in, I think it's North Carolina. It's Dr. Buttar, B-U-T-T-A-R, that has a machine that removes heavy metals. And he says he can fix anything by removing heavy metals from the body. And people who do intestinal cleansing often report their vision improving so much that they have to get a new prescription in one month for oh, their glasses. Awesome. And it's like, well, how can that be the case that their their vision improves from intestinal cleansing? Well, part of intestinal cleansing is putting clay and other nutrients in the body that absorb toxicity. So a lot of toxicity is coming out of the brain, coming out of the eye, and then the body's fixing itself. Yeah, the, and, the eyes are directly related to the liver in Chinese medicine. Right, so maybe when you're doing intestinal cleansing, the liver now finally has a, a place to dump the toxicity it's been holding on to because the intestines are flowing and stuff's moving through. So it's dumping toxicity. Now your the vision's improving. Um, there's so many possible reasons. Um, at one point, I was having this problem where when I would drive, my vision would just go blurry. And it happened about three times, and it kind of freaked me out. And so what I did was a seven-day cleanse, and I drank a whole bunch of green juice, that I made and I put dandelion in it, which is so bitter. And I actually could feel the juice going in my head. It was so weird. And it, the blurriness never came back. And I had a reading from a friend of mine who's a shaman and she said that my intuition was getting so good. Oh my goodness. That uh-huh. my, that my intuitive vision was getting so strong that my physical uh-huh. eyes couldn't keep up with it. Wow, you guys. Oh, my gosh. The end of the show. I was going to bring up Ferguson, Missouri towards the end and pull people in for that because there's a lot of new news for that. However, we didn't get a chance to do this on this roundtable. Maybe next time we will. I want to thank all the callers, Nick, Heather, Bruce McDonald, sorry, uh, who else? Wally and Arno Goran. Um, I put the website, uh, totalhealthmasteryusa.com in the chat. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much, Arno. You have no idea how amazing uh, the information was that you shared with us tonight. And come again. Thank you, Noreen. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Stay tuned, you guys, for the next round table on Studio A, Revolution Radio. Wild at heart. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to Revolution Radio. I feel.